So we have here a problem about stock rights. Beb company issued rights to subscribe to its share capital, the ownership of four shares, entitling the shareholders for to subscribe for one share at par. So a while ago, we have mentioned we should take care of these three important things. So number one, the subscription price would be 100. Right? What's the second thing? The second thing is the conversion rate. The conversion rate is uh -huh. you should write to subscribe the ownership of four shares entitling the shareholders to subscribe for one share at par. All right. And then lastly, we have our so the conversion rate is four, right? Conversion rate four rights for one share. Okay. And lastly, the value of shares, we can acquire a total of, so the number of rights that we have is 25,000, same as the number of shares that we hold, right? If our conversion rate is 4, we can acquire a total of 6250. Okay. That's important to know. So we have three situations here, which accounts for the three methods, right? The first one, the fair value of the right is given. The second one uh, is the shares are quoted rights on. And the third one is the shares are quoted X rights. Okay. So regarding the receipts of rights, we have here. So all of these situations, we will present it if it is accounted for separately. All right. So number one, when we receive the shares, we would debit stock rights and credit investment in equity securities. Okay, so that would be one stock right is five. So five multiplied by 25,000 stock. Next is under situation one, what will happen if we exercise this rights. So we used the right. So since we use the rights, we have bought our shares at the subscription price, right? Remember, a while ago, we accounted for it that when we use the rights, we can acquire a total of 6,250 shares. So 6,250 shares multiplied by the subscription price is 100. Let's put that on the side. Mm -hmm. So 6250 shares multiplied by 100 subscription price. Okay. And then we have now used up the stock rights. <clears throat> By the way, this is a credit. That's what we spent on, right? We just edit this here. So as not to confuse this, this is this. And then the stock rights value is 125,000 because we have used them up. So we have given cash and we have given the stock right. Therefore, the value of our investment in equity securities would be 750,000. That's the value of the stock rights that we have used, or that's the number of the shares that we have acquired, right? But what if we did not use up our rights? Instead, we sold them. What if we sold the rights? Let's see. 
sold the rights at 7. So if we sold the rights, we will now receive cash 7 multiplied by 25,000 stock rights. Since we sold the rights, we eliminate the rights account and there would be a gain on investment. Amounting to 50,000. That's the second use case. The third use case is what if we let our rights to be expired? If we let them expire, we would simply reverse the receipt entry. So we would debit investment in equity securities and credit stock rights. 125, 125. So that's for situation one, where the fair value of the stock rights is even. Now, let's go to situation number two. Okay. So for situation number two, let's say that the shares are quoted rights on 125 and the shares are quoted X rights. 120. So under situation two, we would simply deduct the fair value of stocks rights on minus rights. Okay. So fair value of stock rights on is 125. Fair value of stock X rights is 100, so or 120, I should say. So the value of our stock rights would be 5. Okay? And we would see how it's different. So if we receive the share, that would still be one, 5 fair value multiplied by 25 stock rights. So indeed, that is 125,000, 125,000. When we use the rights, we will account for the same thing, right? That would be debit, investment in equity securities, 750, credit cash, and credit the stock rights. We eliminate the stock rights because we sold it. We have also exercised and used up cash. Again, everything else is the same, right? It's just that the initial valuation of our stock rights are different. Lastly, if our sold rights is at 7, instead of exercising them, again, we debit cash, 7 selling price multiplied by 25,000 stock rights, credit gain on investment, credit stock rights, and when we let them expire, we simply reverse the entry. Okay? So the same, right? It's just that it's a coincidence that the value of stock rights that we computed is the same as when it is given. Okay? So... In situation number three, what if the shares are quoted X rights 125? Since only one fair value is given, shares are quoted X rights 125, we need to use the parity value method okay so how do we do that since this is x right our formula is the fair value of shares minus the subscription price divided by the number of rights per share let me just copy this once again once again the subscription price is 100 the conversion rate is four rights per share, and the number of shares that can be acquired is six to fifty. So fair value shares. Mm -hmm. There is no fair value, so that is simply the par. So one hundred twenty-five, and then the stock price is one hundred. So fair value of shares is one twenty-five. That's given actually, and the. Subscription price is 100. There you go. And the number of rights per share is 4 rights 
per share. And so, we would account for this as the fair value of stock, right? Would be 6.25. So now, our amounts would be different. Just copy this here. So now, if we receive the shares, that would be 6.25. Let's delete the numbers so that we won't be confused. There you go. 6.25 multiplied by 25,000 shares. Next up, if we would use the rights, we would again spend the subscription price of 100 and the total number of shares that we can acquire is 6,250. So that is 625,000. The stock rights is used, so we eliminate it. And so the value of the shares that we acquired is 781,250. If instead of selling, we have sold the rights at seven, that would be 25,000 stock rights multiplied by seven. The value of our stock rights is 156,250. So we have a gain of 18,750. Lastly, if we simply let the stock rights to expire, that would be a reversal of our entry from the date of receipt, right? So that's it. In some situation, the stock rights are not accounted for separately. So let's show that quickly. So there would just be a slight difference if the stock rights are not accounted for separately. Let's put that here. Stock rights not accounted for separately this means if it's not accounted for separately our stocks would not our stock rights would not be recognized in our journal entry so there would just be a memo entry so if we use up the rights we simply debit our investment in equity securities and credit cash alone if we would sell the rights however for seven we would debit cash and we would credit the equivalent investment in equity securities. That would be accounted for as a reduction of our investment. Since there's nothing, there's no stock rights to be credited, right? So there would also be no gain or sale. And then if we just let the, expire, the rights to be expired, then again, we would just have a memo entry. And that's it in all cases. No matter what the situation is, whether the fair value of stocks is given or it is situation number two or it's situation number three, we would have the same journal entry. Because since the stock or the stock rights are not accounted for separately, no debits or credits regarding stock rights. And that concludes all the videos. And if you have watched all these videos, then I congratulate you. If you're able to follow through in our discussion, then I am confident already that you can pass the exam. However, if you are still struggling, then you still have some time to replay this video, master the concepts, and I am rooting for you. I believe in you that you can not only pass, but ace the exam. Thank you, everyone, and good luck in your upcoming exams. Bye-bye.